OK, so let's continue from the death and burial of Sarah. So Abraham was 137 years old and Isaac was 37 when Sarah died at the age of 127. She is only a woman. OK, she is the only woman actually whose age is mentioned uh, at the time of death and is recorded in the Bible. She was obedient and worthy partner of Abraham. She was a co-heir and a divine and, you know, had a, a co-heir in the divine promise of God. Peter honors her as an example of inner beauty and uh, respected and uh, and respect and obedience. So Peter also in the New Testament talks about her and gives her example of inner beauty, respect and obedience. So probably Abraham was away from home when she died. Okay, When she died, Abraham was not there at her place and he went to mourn for Sarah when he came to know that she has died and to weep over her. Okay, he went to the gate uh, the, uh, he went to the gate of the nearby Hittite uh, town to buy a plot to bury her. Okay, so it is uh, basically, uh, if you can, if you read more about this incident, it is said probably the uh, many of the scholars are trying to tell that probably Abraham did not go back after uh, that sacrificial incident of Isaac. Okay, so it was not consulted or it was not in, you know, uh, in, 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 in mutual understanding of Abraham and Sarah that uh, Abraham took Isaac to sacrifice on the mount and probably it created a dispute between Abraham and Sarah and many of the scholars uh, they talk about about it that probably this was a reason why he did not return and he was away from uh, Sarah and he and Isaac they were away from Sarah at that time and she was there alone and uh, with the household and everything and uh, when he died when she died we can say uh, then Abraham went to mourn over her. So there was a time gap of around <coughs> 30, 30, you know, 30, sorry, three years or something like that. Okay, so something like that we can say. Okay, so that is how we can even analyze and understand the years of Abraham, the time when Isaac was being, was being sacrificed. Okay, so Abraham's purpose of Machpelah show that, uh, show us a lot of things. So why uh, Abraham chose or purchased the land at Mekpela was uh, something very different and something very unique and something very uh, something to learn from. So Abraham was still a foreigner, a temporary resident in the promised land. He did not own an inch of land in Canaan. Okay, he did not own an inch of land in Canaan. We have to understand that. Okay, and but the only plot that he owned right now was a graveyard. Okay, it was a witness to him that his descendants would own this land, okay? So he was a foreigner, he did not have an inch of land, but it was a witness when he purchased this land, it was a witness that his descendants would own this plot of land, this piece of land, okay? Why? In the Oriental culture, culture every person had a strong desire to be buried in his own homeland, okay? To be buried in his own homeland among his own people. That was the desire of every person of this culture of the Orient times that they wanted to be buried in their own homelands. Okay, uh, so that was a desire of these people also. So when uh, this was symbolic act now, we can see that this was a symbolic act that Abraham's purchase of burial ground for this family. Okay, so which meant that this will be our land. It is a prophetic thing, it is a symbolic thing that this is our land and to this land, we will be buried and this will be our land, okay? So where that mother of the chosen race is buried, there will be a hope, there will be their homeland. It meant final renunciation of Ur and Haran. Abraham wanted to buy only the cave, but on insistence by Ephron, he bought the entire field according to the price of Mesopotamia. So he just wanted to buy that cave, you know, that place of cave where he could bury uh, the household, the people of the household. But um, it was a problematic situation because if he purchases the piece of land, then the responsibility would be on the original owner and that piece of land, then the owner of that piece of land uh, would not be, uh, have authority over that land properly. And uh, the rest of the thing will have to be done, the caretaking and everything will have to be done by the, the main owner or the first owner. So it was creating a lot of problems. So he insisted that uh, Abraham should purchase the whole Field. So Abraham did purchase the whole field and this was the first property of the patriarchs and it was a burial ground or it was a graveyard. Can you imagine the first ground that a patriarchs owned was a graveyard? 
Nobody would like that, but that was so. So the cave of Machpelah became the burial place of Sarah, Abraham, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, and Leah. Even today, 4,000 years later, this cave of Machpelah is important historically. It is uh, historically as well as religiously, I would say. Uh, so a Muslim mosque has been built over it and the entrance of it has not been permitted or open for anyone. So the next thing that we see now, uh, we have spoken about the trial, the main trial of Abraham. We have spoken about the death of Sarah. Now we'll move towards one of the interesting parts again is the marriage of Isaac and Rebecca. Okay, so we'll talk about a wife for Isaac. Here we see Abraham's concern for uh, concern, the servant's attitude, Rebecca's character, and the principles for Christian marriage. Okay, so the father's first thing that we're going to see here is the father's commission. Okay, this is a story, uh, story fi finding of a wife for Isaac is very beautiful and very delightful. It is very unique and uh, very sweet kind of a story. So Abraham was now 140 years, Isaac was around 40 years, and his main concern was to get his son a wife who was a good and right girl for him. Uh, she should share her husband's faith in God and be with him a worthy guardian and transmitter of the covenant of God. He knew Isaac has to play a very vital role, important role. So his wife has to be a good and righteous woman. So because they have to be good guardians and the transmitter of the covenantal relationship of God with their children. It was a very important aspect. So Abraham's family was to live a separated life, a holy life. They had not to be absorbed into the Canaanites by intermarriages. So their children should not marry into the Canaanites and get you know unholy and, and be absorbed in the kind of culture that the Canaanites live in. Okay, the separation was essential to the fulfillment of the covenant. Separation was essential for the separation, special, complete separation basically was very essential so that the covenant can be fulfilled and the redeemer can be born. Okay, so Abraham's uh, chief steward, uh, who was Eliezer, was a very trustworthy person, a man of prayer and a good administrator. Abraham did not want Isaac to go to his homeland because they have already left that place. He did not want Abraham to, uh, Isaac to go to that place to find a wife for himself. So he sent uh, he sent Eliezer over there and he instructed him very carefully. Okay, So he was sure that God would uh, select a wife for Isaac. He would lead the servant in his mission. Under no circumstance was Isaac to go to Mesopotamia. He might stay there and forget God's covenant purpose for him. Okay, so let's see how it all goes about. So uh, let's see the servant's mission. Eliezer, Abraham's chief servant, is one of the most attractive minor characters of the Old Testament. He reminds us of the Holy Spirit sent by the Father to take out the world, uh, take out take the world out as a bride for his son. So the way Rebecca is brought by Elias and in the same way the you know, Holy Spirit brings out the world from its sinful nature and uh, brings it to Jesus Christ. Okay, So Elias takes 10 camels loaded with good and costly things for the future wife of Isaac as dowry gifts. He is His piety and faith in God's guidance outshines his other qualities. He took his responsibility with great power and great earnest uh, and great uh, you know earnesty. Okay, so Eliezer goes to the town of Nahor, named after Abraham's brother. As he stood there at the well in the mid afternoon praying, even before he finishes praying, he sees Rebecca coming. What he was looking for in the bride was willingness to serve others. He, that was the main characteristic he was looking for in the girl that she should be serving, okay? she should be serving, which involved or which included kindness, hospitality, initiative, industry, energy, and self unselfishness. So to draw water for 10 thirsty camels, not only for Eliezer, water was a hard task. And that also after a long journey for the camels, means that these camels have traveled long distance long long distance and now they were thirsty and we all know how much water can camels drink okay so it was not a small task to feed 10 camels drink of water and also eliezer so the girl who would offer this was a test the girl who would offer water to these 10 camels along with eliezer would be ideal 
for Isaac. Rebecca fulfilled the sign she confirmed, which confirmed his choice and he immediately gave her the gold bracelets and the ring. When he learned who Rebecca was, he was humbled and grateful and he bowed and worshipped God that God gave him success in his mission. Laban, Rebecca's brother, seized the costly gifts and rushed to welcome Abraham's servant. He initiates the inhospitality and responsibility about Rebecca's marriage. He did this probably because his father was very old and very sick and who was Bethuel. And it was a responsibility of the brother if the father is very advanced in age and very sick that he should take care of the sister's marriage. Let's see what happens next. The bride's response. Let's see what Rebecca has to do. Rebecca had an outstanding character. Okay, it's a very different and unique character we see in women. So she was beautiful and pure at that time. Okay, and uh, she was kind, energetic, hospitable, and helpful as seen in the well, at the well, sorry. Uh, she was full of courage, faith, and purpose. She was willing to go with Eliezer to a strange land from where she may never return. She was lovable woman. She was humble and when because she got down from the camel to meet Isaac as soon as she saw him. Isaac settled her in her mother's tent as the first lady of the covenant family. She became his wife and he loved her. Isaac was lonely and needed a loving wife. Rebecca separated from her family, needed Isaac's love. Love came naturally to them. Rebecca's strong, purposeful nature balanced and strengthened Isaac's passive spirit. So Isaac was quite passive. He needed an enthusiastic partner. Okay, let's see uh, some of the principles for marriage, for Christian marriage, as shown in Genesis 24. It should be from within the family of God, that is believers. Prayer for divine guidance should be done while choosing the partner. There should be consideration of the character. Character is important. There'll be, there should be willingness to leave home. There should be mutual respect and love. There should be strength. That they, should, they should strengthen one another. Okay, so these are the requirements or principles of a Christian marriage. Okay, so prayer and devotion to God are very important in a happy married life. Okay, it is significant that Isaac went out the field one evening to meditate. Okay, probably it is said that some people say that it was a custom uh, for him to pray and meditate uh, every evening. And probably he was praying that Eliezer should be successful in his mission. And he and even prayer prepared him for the marriage and the marriage for him. Okay, so this was about we can see about how Rebecca and uh, Isaac got married with each other. Okay, last part we are going to see is about Abraham's death. Okay, so Genesis 25 records the death of uh, Abraham's life or end of Abraham's life and it lists his sons and the secondary wives, Keturah and Hagar. Uh, so this is probably to show how God kept his promise and made them, made him the father of many nations through Keturah, through Hagar, through Sarah, so many nations. So uh, sons of Keturah and Ishmael became ancestors of different tribes in Arabia, like uh, the southeastern parts of Palestine and the Sinai Peninsula. Okay, Abraham's descendants from Keturah were basically Medianites, Dedanites, and uh, Dedanites, and Sabians. Okay, Sabians means from Sheba. Ketura would uh, could not expect her children to share the inheritance with Isaac, okay, because it was not possible. Again, Abraham avoids conflict by following the custom of that time. He gave lots of gifts to the six sons of Ketura and they left that place and he were, they were sent away. Their twins, uh, we can see that he died at the age of 175, good old age, 175 years. He lived in Canaan for 100 years, and uh, of which after 35 years, which 35 years were after Isaac's marriage. Okay, So their twins, Isaac's marriage, uh, after Isaac's marriage, they had twins, Esau and Jacob. So when Esau and Jacob were 15 years old, uh, Abraham died. Isaac and Ishmael united temporarily to mourn for the common loss and buried him beside Sarah in the cave of Machpelah. So let's see uh, about concluding aspects about Abraham. Abraham was one of the most greatest men in the Old Testament. By faith, he committed his life and family to God. He left his homeland at God's command, lived as an alien in Canaan. He believed 
even to the point of sacrificing his only son. He had his share of faults and weaknesses, but God's grace took over of him, took care of him. He was generous, forgiving, selfish, worshipped God, prayed and interceded for others. He was a prophet. He was justified by faith. Jews and Arabs count him as their father, and the New Testament believers honor him as their father in faith. Most importantly, he was the friend of God. Okay, this was all that we can see about Abraham. Okay, so from next chapter onwards, we will talk about Isaac, Jacob, and gradually about Joseph. So Joseph is your assignment. I have already given you your portions. I hope you have you are working on your videos because I just have to complete two and a half more chapters, which will be done very quickly. Okay, so uh, I expect you all to be ready by next week, and we will take live classes next week. Okay, probably around Wednesday, and uh, I I hope you all should be ready with your videos of your lectures, of your classes, of your portions, and we will together view those videos on Wednesday, and we will discuss and we will finish the course. Okay, so thank you and keep studying, keep learning. God bless you all.